What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel and welcome to week seven predictions. Oh, one of the most loaded slates of the college football year is finally on tap for us this weekend. There are so many great games. We got three top 25 matchups, all of which will be coming out here through different parts of your evening tonight. And thank you for taking time out of your day to simply watch this video. But it's time to dive on into one of the most anticipated matchups of the college football season so far. And this should be a fun one from Eugene, Oregon. And Autzen Stadium will be rocking for the number two Ohio State Buckeyes and the number three Oregon Ducks, a possible little bit of a new rivalry emerging here in the Big Ten Conference. And we'll tell you everything you need to know about the Bucks and Ducks here in just a little bit. But before we do that, I'm just going to say thank you for however you support me. Again, I thank you once again for taking time out of your day to watch this video. And if you're as big of a college football nerd as I am and you want to help support me here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss anything I upload. You can also like, comment, and share. It all helps support what I do here on this platform. But if you want to look at anything else I do and are interested in anything else I do outside of YouTube, hey, guys, go give me a follow on Twitter or X, whatever you prefer to call it. It's at TailgateNate29. And I'm going to try to be posting a little bit more. Haven't been the best about it but I'm going to start trying to post a little bit more about games I call and articles I write and literally everything else I do in the sports media realm if you're interested go give me a follow ladies and gentlemen let's not waste any more time shall we Eugene Oregon is going to be popping and everyone is going to be there college game day will be there Josh Pate will be there and everyone's eyes will be glued to the TV on Saturday night hey how do we do preview predictions here on the channel Glad you asked. We'll take a deep dive into what happens, uh, sort of the keys to the game when each team possesses the football. So we'll first go through some keys to the game when Ohio State is on offense against the Oregon defense, and then we'll flip it. We'll look at the Ducks offense against the Silver Bullet defense. I'll give you some final thoughts and sort of preview what I think is going to happen in this matchup, as well as give you a final score prediction for who comes away with the win in our first top three matchup this season. But I do want to give some initial thoughts here in for this one before we really dive on into breaking this thing down piece by piece. This game is going to be absolutely fantastic. It'll probably be one of the better games that we have on this weekend, and it'll probably be one of the better games you see throughout the college football season. We are going to learn a lot about both of these two teams because by far and away, yes, I know Ohio State's played Iowa and uh, Oregon's played Boise State. That's a legitimate out, out of conference game, but otherwise, haven't really been tested in conference play. This is by far and away the biggest test for both of these teams, and I guarantee you both offensively and defensively, these teams are going to throw things at one another that neither has seen on film and that neither is going to absolutely 100% be prepared for in this game. Both teams are going to provide some different looks, again, both offensively and defensively, and I think it's just going to make for a really fun one there from Eugene from Eugene, Oregon. There's going to be something special brewing in Autzen Stadium. Let's go ahead and start diving in to what happens when Ohio State possesses the football. Look, let's just go ahead and break things down position by position. Quarterback, Will Howard, man. He, he's thrown for uh, 1,248 yards, 12 touchdowns, does have three interceptions on the air, but over 70% completion percentage and just about 10 yards per throw. And that's not per completion. That is per pass attempt. And per, per completion, again, I don't have that stat in front of me. It would probably be something along the likes of 12 or 13. And maybe I, I'm exaggerating that number, but just looking at the stats, doing some quick, quick math there, that's probably where the number is going to fly in, right? Will Howard has been a great quarterback for the Buckeyes this year. And I'll talk about another aspect of his game here in just a little bit. But he's got a, a, a huge plethora amount of weapons surrounding him. Let's start out in that backfield. Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson are both averaging at least 7.8 yards per carry. They have both been fantastic backs for the Buckeyes this season. You look at that wide receiver, man, Emeka Igbuka, Carnell Tate, Brandon Innes. They were returners this season. Emeka Igbuka is just about 400 yards away from becoming the all-time receiving leader in Ohio State 
football history. But there's one guy that I haven't mentioned yet, and all you college football fans know who it is. It was the guy on the thumbnail screen back there just a little bit ago, the freshman, the 18-year-old Jeremiah Smith, one of the best players in the country as a freshman, 23 catches, 453 yards and six touchdowns. But what the stat line is not going to show you is some of the catches he's made, made two of them back to back against Michigan State and one of them in the end zone against Iowa last week. I mean, my goodness, Jeremiah Smith is a handful. So is Emeka Igbuka, and you have to account for a lot of uh, for a lot of the other Ohio State wide receivers there as well. The offensive line has really stepped it up from last year, and while it still has some holes, and you could argue hasn't been tested by a pass rush in Oregon that has 16 sacks this season, it's held up pretty well and has definitely improved from where it was the last season. Maybe clean up the turnovers and some of the mistakes a little bit. They started to show up a little bit against Michigan State. They were able to clean it up against Iowa for the most part there, though. Third down conversions ha has been fantastic. It's been a very balanced and effective offense so so far this season for the Oregon defense though they have well as well have been really really good now while they've seen their struggles here and there this season specifically in defending the run especially against Boise State but I mean come on no one has been able to contain Ashton Genty so far this season the secondary has been absolutely fantastic for Oregon and that is my first key to watch here especially when Ohio State possesses the football I am very very curious to see who is going to have the edge here in this game because this to me is one of the most important battles when Ohio State possesses the football. It's this Ohio State wide receiver with Emeka Ibuka, Jeremiah Smith, and others against this Oregon secondary. And just to list off a couple names here for you, Jabbar uh, Muhammad, a Washington transfer, Kobe Savage, a Kansas State transfer, and then a couple guys with the last name Johnson, Tysheem Johnson, as well as Brandon Johnson. All those guys really experienced, really good players here for him. All of them have at least 15 tackles and Jabbar Muhammad has got six passes defended so far this season and again those guys can play corner can play safety they've been a really good bunch for Oregon so far this season it's going to be their toughest task yet trying to limit these Ohio State wide receivers and what they are are able to do because they are dangerous and they are especially dangerous in space. The yards after the catch is what makes this Ohio State wide receiver room so, so good. If you let Emeka Igbuka, Jeremiah Smith, even Carnell Tate or Brandon Innes get in space, forget about it. They are gone. That is going to be an absolute huge key here as this is an Oregon offense that, or Oregon defense, I should say, that hasn't really forced a whole ton of turnovers yet. It does have a couple of picks. Uh, both Johnsons have one. That's Tysheem and Brandon. They each have one. Uh, another guy in that secondary, and Nico Reed, has one there as well. And Nico Reed's been a pretty solid defensive back for him so far this season. So that's just an interesting matchup to watch. But let's now move to the Oregon defensive front. It has forced 16 sacks so far this season. It will be the best pass rush Ohio State has faced so far this year. But the Ducks defensive front is going to have their hands full. If they couldn't slow down Ashton Genty, I mean, come on, let's be quite honest. Nobody could. Let's expand outside of that. You saw moments in that Oregon State game where Oregon really struggled against the run. You saw moments in that UCLA game where they struggled against the run. For the most part, though, they were able to shut UCLA down. They settled in against Oregon State. And just this past weekend, they were able to limit Michigan State to, uh, I'll, I'll get you the stats here in just one second, but they were able to hold Michigan State's ground game off really pretty darn well. Uh, just got the stats in front of me. Yeah, only two yards per carry uh, for in that game for the Michigan State Spartans this past week. But I mean, just when you think you have one running back stopped, if you game plan well for Travion Henderson, I mean, the Quinshawn Judkins is going to come out and beat you. If you game plan well for Judkins, well, then that leaves Henderson to go... Uh, wide open there, right? And be able to break off some runs. Both of them are capable of ripping off uh, big runs. And that's something Oregon's going to have to plan for. But the thing that I think is going to be the X factor for Ohio State in this game is Will Howard in the quarterback run. You take a look at his stat line there and you might say, okay, why is that something that you need to watch out for? Because Will Howard on the season, just 24 carries, 64 yards, does have four rushing touchdowns though. And we've seen Will Howard call his own number a couple of times here, mix in some of that design quarterback run, mix in some design quarterback draws, because especially if Ohio State and they can spread you out and get this wide receiver room going and the run game is running well, and then you throw the Will Howard quarterback run in there, I mean, my goodness, 
Oregon certainly is going to have their hands full here in the toughest test that Oregon's defense has faced so far this year. Again, that quarterback run game will be an X factor, and we'll come back to it later. But we got to move on here and start previewing this Oregon offense because they, too, have a new quarterback this year. With Bo Nix gone and off to the NFL, Dylan Gabriel is taking over this offense here. And, well, he, for the most part, he's been really, really good. Over the past couple of weeks, you've seen Dylan Gabriel have some struggles, and we'll talk about that later. But 1,449 yards in 77 completion, 77% uh, completion percentage, darn near 78%, 11 touchdowns and three picks. He's also got three rushing touchdowns. Dylan Gabriel has been amazing overall for the Oregon Ducks so far this season. You take a look at Jordan James, that running back. He's been running really well, 88 carries, 552 yards and five touchdowns. That's 6.3 yards per carry. And come on now, their uh, weapons in the wide receiver room are almost second to none. Tez Johnson, Treshawn Holden, Evan Stewart, and that tight end in Ferguson a a as well. All those guys have over at least 180 yards receiving on the season. Their down percentage is good. They've really cleaned up that offensive line play because if you remember, Oregon's offensive line throughout the first couple of weeks had really, really struggled. Well, that has gotten a whole lot better for the Oregon Ducks since. I don't believe they've allowed a sack since week three. I definitely could be wrong in that, but Oregon's offensive line has played so much better. And Here are a couple things you have to realize about the Oregon offense this season, though. A, it's going to get its biggest uh, offensive test by far because you got to go up against an Ohio State defense that has been a lights out this season. Nine turnovers for 17 sacks. They've only allowed, I think, three or four offensive touchdowns so far this season. And apart from the beginning of the game against the Marshall Thundering Herd, this is a defense that has been excellent so far this year. Its secondary is amazing, led by Caleb Downs and Denzel Burke. Its defensive line, led by Jack Sawyer and JT, to, uh, or I, sh I should just say JTT, for sake of time, JT Tui Maloa, if you want uh, that full name. Tyleek Williams seems like he's going to be healthy and ready to play. And a linebacker group that's also played really well so far this year. It's a Buckeye defense, guys, that could end up being the best in the entire country. This is an Oregon offense that is not going to try to go tempo, tempo. Uh, that's not going to try to go tempo, tempo, tempo. It is not the thousand miles an hour light speed offense that we saw the Oregon run last season with uh, Bo Nix. With Dylan Gabriel here, it's not necessarily more of a slow it down offense because they still do l like to go fast, but it's not like let's take shots down the field every other play and it's not that they don't trust their wide receivers to do that but it's more of that mid-range passing attack that's starting to work jordan james has been running well and you see there 32 minutes per game of possession this is an oregon offense that likes to control the pace they like to control the clock again it is not the go 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 offense that we saw out of the ducks last season and it has had some problems this year there have been times where dylan gabriel has not been his sharpest you take a look at last week against michigan state a 31 to 10 win sure hey that's a pretty convincing win there dylan gabriel threw two interceptions in the end zone throw two interceptions in the end zone against the ohio state defense and see what happens this is a defense that will probably have a lot of really good moments against oregon already you cannot be giving this team for free passes you cannot allow this ohio state defense to force those turnovers to generate pressure again this is an oregon offensive front that has been really good so far this season and it's gonna throw some or i say that's been really good as of late so far this season but trench play i think is going to be a big key key here one ohio state's run defense has been one of the best if not the best in the country the whole season up to this point jordan james has been running well this is an offensive line that has got to create some pushback, and it also cannot allow guys like Jack Sawyer, JTT, Tyleek Williams, and even some of these linebackers, even they can bring Caleb Blounds, uh, Caleb Downs, my apologies, or uh, Sonny Styles. they're off some blitzes. You can't let Ohio State create havoc in this backfield. I think that's the biggest key for both sides because, I mean, let's flip that narrative for a second, right? What if Ohio State can't get this pass rush going? You're going to let Dylan Gabriel sit in the pocket and sling the rock? Does Tez Johnson, Treshawn Holden, and Evan Stewart? That's not a recipe for success. Ohio State's got to do what they've done all season long. They've got to create havoc. They've got to get into that backfield. They're averaging just over three sacks per game. you got to be able to get back there 
get the ball out of Dylan Gabriel's hands early and trust your defensive players in the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Oregon's going to do the exact same thing. They trust Tez Johnson. They trust Trayshawn Holden, maybe even Evan Stewart in some of those downfield one-on-one -on -one matchups as well. But if you are Oregon, the biggest thing is to avoid those turnovers. Again, Dylan Gabriel has thrown three interceptions. And if you just go by that latest the performance, again, threw two in the end zone. I'll repeat myself again. Throw two interceptions in the end zone against this o Ohio State defense and then call me afterwards. It's not going to go well for you. That has got to get cleaned up. And Dylan Gabriel's got to be really sharp here in, in this game. Overall, guys, this is just going to be an absolute fun one. We got two 5-0 teams, both 2-0 in conference, and possibly just the first of what could be two or three matchups between these two teams here, as if the current track continues. Ohio State and Oregon seem to be on a collision course in the Big Ten Championship. Ohio State is the slight favorite on the road. Uh, at the beginning of the year, Oregon did open as the slight favorite at home. The line has shift to the, shifted to the Buckeyes here in this one. What do I think is going to happen from Eugene? What do I think is going to happen? Sorry, I um don't know why there was such a long pause. Let me take a water break, actually. Okay, not don't edit these videos, by the way. We just go ahead and run through it. So I apologize for that pause. What is going to happen here from Eugene, Oregon? Well, first off, I think Oregon is going to come out of the gate really, really hot. And I think Autzen Stadium is going to be lit on fire. It's going to be loud. But Ohio State, I think, is too talented. Ohio State will settle in. This defense is going to make some plays. It's going to be an absolute dogfight. But I think, again, Ohio State, again, hasn't shown that much uh, – offensively and I don't think Oregon has either but Oregon's had to pull some things out of the bag to get past teams like Idaho and get past the Boise State and even uh, emerge in that second half against the Oregon State Beavers and I've just seen too many questions from Oregon there still are some questions about the Buckeyes and how they handle it, an opponent with this level of prestige but I think the talent level on Ohio State is better than what Oregon has, and I think this Ohio State defense especially will help do enough to help the Buckeyes win, win this game. Again, I think Oregon comes out of the gate storming hot, and they may even have a lead entering the halftime locker room, but the Buckeyes will use a couple of key early second half scoring drives. They'll be able to shut this Oregon offense down in the second half, and I have the Buckeyes coming on top of this one 35 to 24. I know, pretty big point spread, but I think a late score by the Buckeyes helped seal this game and Ohio State gets a massive, massive road win and move to 6-0 and and clinch their bowl eligibility spot. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section down below. Remember to play hard but tailgate harder, and I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.